Hi and welcome to this short session on Zika virus disease. As we all know, Zika virus has been uh, globally affecting large number of populations and therefore it is quite imminent that uh, there would probably a uh, few questions on uh, Zika virus from um, entrance exam point of view or from licensing exams. So let's get on. I'll uh, try to give you a small overview of how to approach these questions on Zika disease. Uh, Zika virus is Zika virus is a virus which is from the family of Flaviviridae, and uh, it is from the species Flavivirus. Zika virus MCQ point number two. Zika virus is an enveloped, non-segmental. non-segmented single-stranded positive sense RNA virus now this Zika disease Zika virus if you just see Zika virus has a core center it is icosahedral and it has a core structure like this and there are a few capsid proteins like these so these internals are the capsid proteins and above them you have the pillars these pillars are there and over the pillars you have a, a t-shaped cells or protein molecules these t-shaped protein molecules are basically what we have as enveloped proteins these are e dimer proteins the inside these pillars these are basically M proteins and inside you have the green color things and the green color structure these are the capsid proteins so overall if you look at uh, the Zika virus from an eagle eye view from outside if you just have a look at the Zika virus from down here you would see a ball like structure with a lot of E elongated type of proteins which are just visible from the superficial structure and within this E, below this E and below this E we shall have the M proteins and below which we shall have the capsid proteins. So this forms the total envelope of the, of the Zika virus uh, structure and inside you of course have the genomic RNA. So that is the genomic RNA that is there inside the Zika virus. So there could be two MCQs for you to remember. It is an enveloped, of course, we have talked a lot. There are two types of proteins, that is E protein and the M protein. These are both enveloped proteins. M would form the M would form the pillar. It forms the pillar of the envelope, and this forms the envelope structure. Right? So these are your two MCQs that it is enveloped. Second point is it is a RNA virus so that's what you need to remember for your exams next mcq uh, basically zika disease if you see question number two topic two zika disease if you see zika disease is a zoonotic disease zoonotic in the sense that it is from animal to mosquito to animal so it's basically like this it's a zoonotic it's n zoonotic it's n zoonotic that's what we call as and uh, slowly this whole thing went from the animals into humans and it was uh, going from man towards the mosquito and mosquito again causing the infection in the man and this is known as anthropozoonosis this is known as anthropozoonosis that is from man to mosquito to man the main vector next point question number three that's one of the most important questions the main vector for uh, transmission of Zika disease is Aedes mosquito main vector is please remember it is Aedes mosquito Aedes albopictus and Aedes aegypti Aedes aegypti is the most common cause 
for most common cause for transmission of Zika disease. Next question, question number three, question four, point number four. The incubation period of Zika is varying from seven days till few weeks. In fact, uh, I don't think there's any question on the incubation period because uh, the incubation period for Zika disease is largely unknown. Uh, next point is mode of transmission of Zika. Mode of transmission of Zika is again we have already seen it is from man mosquito man. So it is from it has a vector borne transmission. It is from man to mosquito to man back again. So that's how it goes from man mosquito man. But there could be an MCQ over here. The MCQ is that this transmission is also via the infected blood. It can also be via infected blood or via sexual contact sexual contact or via infected blood so vertical transmission i would like to point out over here is that the vertical transmission is particularly rare vertical transmission is rare it is not very often that you see a vertical transmission uh, question number four point number next point we would like to touch upon is the classical clinical features if you talk about the clinical features of Zika the uh, well, Zika disease is uh, largely asymptomatic disease please remember it does not cause symptom in most of the cases it's largely asymptomatic 80 percent is asymptomatic so basically I can say that the morbidity rates the morbidity rates for Zika morbidity rate for Zika is less than 20 percent right that's the morbidity rate and uh, most commonly the clinical features would be fever it is a macular papular rash associated with plus or minus arthralgia uh, there could be a few complications especially during pregnancy this could lead to microcephaly microcephaly in uh, newborn children but of course that's uh, not a very common complication or the patient might land up into a gulen baron syndrome the patient might land up into a gulen baron syndrome the diagnosis of zika is via three mechanisms we can have rtpcr that is reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction and uh, it could also be by direct viral isolation direct viral isolation or PRNT technique PRNT technique that is a plaque reduction neutralizing test plaque reduction neutralizing test so this is, uh, we would have another session on uh, the various uh, microbiological diagnostic techniques, but just uh, a few points uh, for, because since I've used this term, PRNT is like um, plaque reduction neutralizing. It's a neutralizing test. So the, basically we are going to test for the neutralizing. We are going to test for the neutralizing antibody test. It is a neutralizing antibody test. And uh, there should be uh, usually a four-fold titer. This could be an important MCQ that in uh, the in PRNT we might have a four-fold increase in uh, the increase in the titer for uh, diagnosing for Zika disease. And it's basically an antibody test. So which antibody? I think we all understand and we all know it's a IgM antibody and uh, assessed using a ELISA method. So it's a serological method that is plaque reduction utilizing test and uh, so that's all for the diagnostic techniques and uh, how do we treat treatment for Zika would be IV fluids and uh, rehydration IV fluids and rehydration and uh, of course I think uh, the aspirin tablets should be avoided in case of any fever so next is if we talk about the prevention strategies the prevention strategy would be of course the only way to prevent any viral disease transmitted by mosquitoes would be prevent the mosquito 
So the only way is mosquito control or the vector control. The vector control, as we all uh, have seen initially, that it's predominantly by the Aedes mosquito. So the mainstay would be a larval survey. The larval surveys are most important uh, for uh, Aedes mosquito control. In larval surveys, we are going to go and uh, check for the amount of larva which are uh, predominant in an area. So we might land up in uh, finding something known as container index. Container index. Container index is the number of number of containers which are positive for the Aedes larva divided by the total containers which are checked. Total containers which are checked. Or we can land up in finding out something known as a Brettio index. B R E T E A U. Brettio index. Brettio index is uh, again something similar to the container index. It is the number of container positive. Number of container positive divided by the total number of houses checked. Total number of houses checked or houses surveyed in the area that is known as Brittio index and these are used for uh, larval surveys and uh, along with larval surveys we should also have uh, other methods for uh, vector control that is uh, source reduction source reduction or we can have uh, maybe personal protection source reduction means the water collection should be avoided water collection is avoided and personal protection using chemical methods or bed nets and uh, we can also use biological methods biological methods as uh, use of fishes or uh, we have something known as BTI bacillus thuringiensis is re Liensis. Bacillus thuringiensis israeliensis that is BTI and use of biological methods or we can also use some chemical methods. The chemical methods can be commonly asked so the chemical methods which you need to remember for your exams is use of temiphos or we can use pyrethrum. Or we could use malathion. Malathion, pyrethrum. Pyrethrum and malathion, these both are fogging agents. They are used as pay sprays. And these are fogging agents, pyrethrum. This could be sprayed at 0.1 to 0.2 percent at the rate of 30 to 60 ml per thousand cubic feet of space per thousand cubic feet of space that is the dose for pyrethrum and please remember pyrethrum is a natural extract pyrethrum is a natural extract and it is from a flower that is chrysanthemum on the other hand if you see malathion malathion is nothing but ultra low volume fogging and the use of temiphos. Temiphos is a novel, it is a new type of larvicide. It is a new larvicide, don't forget it is a larvicide. It is used in the dose of 1 milligram per liter of water. So this is the dose for use of temiphos. Temiphos is a larvicide. So these are your couple of questions which you get on Zika disease. So we have actually uh, talked about the incubation period, about the mode of transmission, about the clinical features, diagnosis and treatment for Zika. So I would also like to point out that uh, if you talk about the Zika, the predominant area as you can see is that it's uh, more so in this particular belt. So you can see if you talk of the global health, you can see that it is more so in this particular area and uh, this could be like a tropical or a temperate uh, area where uh, there are more mosquitoes and therefore this disease is prevalent over here. Uh, Zika virus disease was first uh, 
uh, was first brought into light it's a relatively new disease zika virus from was from uganda so the first time uh, zika virus was uh, isolated from uganda in somewhere in 1947 so that's how the basic uh, importance of zika would be and thank you for uh, watching this video and uh, any questions or uh, any doubts you have you're most welcome to put it in the comment box below or you can uh, find us on Facebook. Uh, we have uh, a Facebook page by name of M U K H M O H I T D R on Facebook at the rate Facebook. So there is a Facebook page on which all the updates for preventive medicine and community medicine are there. Or you can join us on our uh, on our social media WhatsApp group or Telegram group on eight six double nine zero one four double zero nine so stay tuned and stay connected and hope to see you in uh, more uh, uh, informative uh, platforms and conferences and uh, see you again thank you so much all the best